Women have lived an inordinately hushed life for most of history. They hardly get the chance to share the same amount of fame as men do. There are very few women who were able to make a difference and leave a mark in history. We will discuss the lives of women in general in different periods of time and we will talk about the women who made a difference during that period. This will help us give an account of how women were treated in different eras. The accounts will also involve details from the different regions of the world where the role of women were different. The stories of women are brimming with romance, loss, adventure, triumph and remorse. However, apart from the occasional appearance of a brave woman who fought against social norms to be remembered in history, most of the times history remembers women only for serving tea when life-changing treaties were being signed. When women are accounted for in history, they are considered as those who form the general history, giving an idea how an average person lived his or her life in an era. This is because most of the women led regular lives and did not get the chance to make huge difference in the world. Sometimes, when we try to understand the lives of women in a specific period, we get an insight into the way in which the common people led their lives. So with the help of this, you will not only be able to establish the place women held and the lives they lived, it will also help you with an understanding of how life was in general for the common people in a specific period of time and in a particular region. Women of the Ancient World During the early years when humans existed solely for food and shelter, life was a lot simpler. Gradually, the requirements changed and with people being able to create a surplus of the food that they produce through farming, new avenues of trade began to open. This led to the formation of societies where people relied on each other for leading their lives more comfortably. Before societies were formed, everyone was more or less equal and there was hardly any fight related to classes, status and gender. Once the societies began to take form and governance and laws were in place, people slowly moved into a period where the standards of living did increase, but the changes were not equally distributed. This had repercussions on humanity and problems that we may be dealing with till this day. From class separation to gender inequality, the presence of a government and society changed many things for humans. So for those who feel that equal rights for women and feminism is a concept of the 20th century, these are phenomena which women have been dealing with right from the ancient times. In the ancient world, the armies were made of men and most of the governing bodies employed men. So women were usually left with the job of household servants. Marriage was seen as an essential part of a society because every society depended on a high birth rate for the society to survive. Females were married soon after their puberty and they found themselves raising a family and involving themselves in family and household-oriented work for most of their lives. Many women also helped in the farms because farming was largely a family business in the ancient world. The ancient world stressed largely on the needs and requirements of the group instead of a single person, an individual. This is what made women play their roles in the household, ensuring that the household was run properly and that the family was well fed and properly taken care of. Care of the old and disabled member of the family also fell under the care of the women. Their role began to get more etched as societies began to depend more and more on strong family foundations for a better society. While women primarily stuck to their roles in the ancient world, there were a few who changed the course of history by making a difference. Leaving their homes to fight wars, become philosophers, luminaries of warriors who would be remembered forever. Some of the most acknowledged women of the ancient world are Sappho. She is considered to be one of the first female writers. Most of her poems revolved around love and passion. She was born in approximately 620 BC and is known to have lived for 50 years. Very less is found about her life and works, but she was considered as one of the best poets by Plato. In an era when women did not get the chance to do much apart from household work, Sappho changed the perspective of many people with her accomplishments in the literary world. Cleopatra Caught in love, passion and politics, Cleopatra was an Egyptian queen of Greek descent. 
She was the last pharaoh of ancient Egypt. Her rule had brought peace and stability in Egypt, but her affair with Mark Antony led to the downfall of her empire and her subsequent death. She is known to have had a lot of power and her unprecedented beauty is talked about till today. Mary Magdalene The Bible portrays a picture of Mary Magdalene as a repentant sinner, while many sects of the religion believe that she was a virtuous woman. Mary Magdalene is known to have lived between 4 BC and 40 AD. The accounts of Mary Magdalene in the Bible are scarce, but her role seems to be notable enough for her to get the attention of the people. She is considered to be the woman who stayed back even after all the male disciples had left after the crucifixion. Boudicca Born in 30 AD, Boudicca was one of the most influential queens of ancient Britain. After the death of her husband, who was the king of the Iseni, Boudicca decided to unite all the warring tribes against the Romans. With successful conquests, Boudicca's army began to grow and she became powerful by the day. The Trung Sisters Trung Trak and Trung Ni are known for their bravery and their ability to stand against foreign dominion in Vietnam. They were experts in the field of martial arts and they rebelled against the Han dynasty and they quickly began to overtake the citadels from the Han dynasty, which was of Chinese origin. The sisters chose to commit suicide when they were finally defeated by the Chinese after three years. Women in Post-Classical Era The Post-Classical Era is referred to as the Middle Ages in Europe. It is also known as the pre-modern era. In Europe, the Middle Ages ended with the conquest of Constantinople by the Turkish armies. This was in 1453. This period saw a lot of changes from the classical civilizations to the gradual shift towards modernization. A number of important developments took place during this period. The manner in which civilizations developed in areas like Asia, Africa, Europe, Mesoamerica and South America was different from the classical times. Now societies were formed in a better way and status and class became more prominent. Diplomats and governments came up with better governing systems and women began to notice a change in their status as well. In medieval Europe, most of the people lived in small rural communities and made their living mainly from the land. Peasant women had a lot of responsibilities in the household and they usually joined their husbands at the farm during times when help was required, like the harvest period. They found it easier to work from home in the form of cottage industries like brewing, baking and similar work that could be conducted from home. Women who lived in the town had the same kind of responsibilities as those who lived in the rural communities. The status of women was largely dictated by biblical texts during this period. They were seen as inferior to men because of original sin having originated with Eve, a woman. Men were considered to have authority over women and some of the Bible teachings even instructed women not to teach and to remain silent. Quite contrary to these teachings was the image of Virgin Mary who was considered to be the channel through which sins could be forgiven and the Christians might be saved. A few women had the opportunity to exercise power during this period which challenged the usual perception of women at that time. The abbesses in convents had many responsibilities and some of them are known to be at a stronger position than the monks. However, monasteries were not the only place where women were powerful. Queens and regents exercised power and responsibility on behalf of their husbands or sons whenever needed. While power was exercised by many women, it is important to remember that the majority of the female gender was supposed to live behind walls and spend most of the time being responsible for managing a household and in prayer and contemplation. Women were married early usually in their teens, and they took up the responsibility of managing their husband's household from there onwards. Women who were married into wealthy households had servants to help them with their tasks, which gave them time to pursue other activities like dancing, singing and playing games. These pursuits helped them keep themselves engaged and enjoy their lives. One of the most risky things during the Middle Ages was childbirth. 
Any complication that arose during pregnancy or delivery of a child would potentially kill the mother and the child. These complications could be considered very minor today, but in the Middle Ages, a problem that arose during pregnancy became difficult for the mother. A cesarean section was performed only if the mother was dying or if she was already dead. This meant that it was almost fatal for the women. Formal training of the midwives did not exist and most of their knowledge came through experience. Women in the Byzantium structure held a favourable status. They were considered equal to their husbands and they had the ability to control their and their husbands' property in many circumstances. In Islam, the status of women was a lot better for the first two centuries, which was during the time of Prophet Muhammad and during the Umayyad period. They enjoyed a lot of autonomy and they also had the ability to own property and manage business but gradually their status began to decline and during the Abbasid rule, when the capital moved from Damascus to Baghdad, Asia's more restrictive perspective of women substantially created a cultural shift which brought the practice of keeping the women out of public life. Female infanticide increased during the Abbasid period and adult women even lost the right to consent or refuse marriage. In China, the post-classical period was dictated by the Song and Tang dynasty. Women in China usually held an inferior status, but the Song and Tang dynasty women held a favourable status. During the Song dynasty, women saw a rise in their status and lesser discrimination took place between the men and women. Even courtesans were able to attend social events and often played instruments and read poems in big events. Most of the empress dowagers involved themselves in the state affairs and some of them made significant contributions to the government as well. The fact that the society was led by women leaders, it understood them in a better way and gave them the place of independent individuals. In the Tang dynasty, women were treated differently, while the government did allow women to sit for the imperial examination and they had the choice of serving as government officials, the dynasty put many rules in place which differentiated between classes. The nobility and the lower class could not marry each other. The Tang dynasty also allowed the government officials to spend time with the courtesans and the fate of the courtesans was mainly unfortunate. They could even be killed by the officials without any repercussions. The life of women in medieval Japan, which was during samurai rule, showed that they lived a life that was dominated by the males in the society. There were a lot of strict rules that existed governing the behaviour of women during this period. Marriages between the samurai families were arranged by the families and the women did not have a say in the marriage. Samurai wives took up the responsibility of running the house and commanding the soldiers whenever their husbands were away. The rest of the times they had to care for their children, take care of the household and organise the finances of the family. There were some prominent women poets and writers during this period at the emperor's court. These women did not become very famous during their lifetimes, but their work is considered to be of great importance today because of its insight into the lives of the people during the period. The introduction of Buddhism in Japan gradually created a lowering of the status of women. Salvation was considered to be accorded to the men only and Buddhist monks accepted men as students only. For women, the only resource was to lead a life of seclusion and contemplation as a Buddhist nun. In the Americas, women were considered as makers of cloth and they were isolated from the household to a place called Aklawazi, House of Chosen Women, where they worked to serve the state. In the Incan reign, every year all ten-year-old girls were inspected and the most beautiful ones were educated while the good-looking ones were set aside for sacrifice. Other girls learned different trades like weaving, spinning and brewing and after four years, the girls were assigned as concubines to the ruler. Some girls would become wives for men whom the ruler wanted to honour and others would go to the Alakwazi. The women who spent their lives at the Alakwazi were supposed to be chased forever and if they were found to be pregnant then they were buried alive alongside their lover. For the Mayans, men and women played different roles but the roles were equally important for the society. 
Women dealt with running the household properly and ensuring that food was distributed appropriately. They also carried out religious responsibilities and ensured that the children were cared for and were raised with complete understanding of their future responsibilities. The Aztec civilization regarded women as equals and it even allowed them to take part in military services. This status of the women continued to rise to the conquest of the Spanish when the European culture suppressed the Aztec culture and women soon became inferior in status when compared to the men. Mongolian women were of a high stature as compared to the other women in Asia during the period. They became horse archers, swordsmen and Genghis Khan even had his daughters trained as army combat generals. This ensured that they had enough say in the government. The Middle Ages was hence a period when different regions and societies treated women differently. As time lapsed, conquests changed the manner in which women were treated in a region. It was affected by the rulers and their tolerance towards the female gender. While there was always a difference in their treatment, we still have women rise to being powerful leaders, philosophers and artists. Let us look at some of the most notable women during the period. Hildegard of Bingen Hildegard lived a life which isolated her to the convent walls, but her presence hardly made a difference because she remained powerful through her advice to known popes, kings and many influential people during her time. She wrote many poems and music. Her writings are considered to be helpful in relieving details about the life of the people during her times. She is known to have lived between 1098 and 1179. Eleanor of Aquitaine. She lived between 1122 and 1204 and she is considered to be the first Queen of France. Her sons Richard and John later became the kings of England. She was able to command authority over the people with her influential alliances and her influence over her sons. Jean of Arc. At the young age of 17, Jeanne of Arc was one of the most unlikely women to show the courage to stand up against the English. Today, she is considered as the patron saint of France. She lived from 1412 to 1431 and she led the French to victory at Orléans. Her unfortunate trial and death only flamed her cause and made her even more popular among the people. Mirabai she was born into a Hindu family in India who held an important status. However, she forsook everything and devoted her life to the worship of Lord Krishna. She is known to have revived Bhakti Yoga in India and is remembered till this day for her relentless devotion. Her poems have been immortalized. Rosvita Rosvita of Gandersheim was one of the first women to have written plays. Her plays were based around Catholic themes. She was a canoness, a poet and a dramatist. Using her writings as a form of evidence, it is considered that she was born around 930 and died around 973. She wrote poems, prose and plays. She wrote mainly for the people of the Abbey. Her works were not discovered till 1500s and a lot of her work is still missing. Women in Pre-Modern History The Pre-Modern History started with Renaissance in Europe. It led to Enlightenment and a lot of inventions began to take place during this time. With Protestant Reformation and the Age of Discovery being the highlights of the period in Europe, the rise of the Ottoman Empire marked the period in North and Northeast Africa. The Ming and Qing dynasty ruled during this period in China. In Japan, the Tokugawa shogunate ruled during the period and the country was largely influenced by the Portuguese who visited Japan for trade. In India, the rise of the Mughal Empire began during this period and the period was marked by economic prosperity and many achievements in art and literature for the subcontinent. With Columbus' discovery of America, colonization began during the pre-modern era and many expeditions from Spain and Portugal were made to the New World. In the pre-modern era, the role of women and their status was more or less inferior in most of the civilizations. In most of the European regions, the attitude of the society towards women were formed by three different beliefs. 
According to the Judeo-Christian belief, women were either considered pure and saintly, just like Virgin Mary, or they were considered to be evil and conspiring like Eve. The Greek philosophy portrayed women to be irrational and intellectually inferior because they were physically weaker than the males of the society. The third belief, among the Europeans, came from the Roman law, which considered women to be dominated by men and denied any legal persona to them. In China, the Neo-Confucian laws spelled the same amount of doom for them, considering them inferior and restricting their social status. This led to the belief around the world that women could be dangerous if they were not controlled properly. However, many women dissented these laws and were vocal about their status in the society. They challenged the rules and argued about the behaviour of men towards them. This gave rise to higher literacy and many literate women voiced their thoughts through poems and writings. As women tried to gain dominion, an attempt to keep them controlled to the witch hunt. It was probably one of the cruelest forms in which discrimination against women took place. During a period of three centuries, over 40,000 people were executed for the practice of witchcraft. Most of the areas where this happened were destroyed by religious differences. 75% of the people who were killed because of witchcraft were women. Let us look at some of the most influential women of the period and how they were able to make a difference. San Teresa of Avila St. Teresa lived most of her life in a convent after her mother passed away. She was able to spend hours and hours in quiet contemplation praying to God and leading a spiritual life. For a certain period of time, she was drawn away from her prayers when her visions were considered to be ungodly by some of the priests. But she went back to her prayers at the age of 41 and went on to create a new order for the nuns, guiding them through the disciplines and allowing them to find spirituality without a lot of strict rules. Catherine de' Medici Catherine was married to the King of France when she was just 14. She is considered to be involved in a lot of politics and she tried to increase the power of the sons she favoured. This was not taken lightly by the people and resulted in the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. Elizabeth I She became Queen of England at a time when England was faced with many turbulations, social and economic. She guided the country to victory over the Spanish Armada and helped England become one of the most dominating powers in the world. The cultural and literary development of England during her reign is considered to be very high. Elizabeth was named successor to the throne by Mary I, who believed in the Catholic faith. She wanted Elizabeth to continue the faith, but Elizabeth ignored this and chose to establish Protestantism as the faith of England. Women in Contemporary History In the modern period, Women's roles have largely risen, but they continue to face gender biasness in many regions. Many countries consider women to be of equal status to women now, and they have gradually risen to take a position which may be higher than men. Women leaders abound, and many of them are at the highest positions in certain countries. Their role has become stronger, and they are no longer limited to household work. This has helped them rise and literacy has ensured that women get the same amount of education as men. This means that they have equal opportunities and they can easily take up similar jobs as their male counterparts. However, these changes have taken time and were gradually introduced after a long period of protests, rebellion and revolts. Till the 20th century, women were still paid lower than the men and their role was still considered to be primarily at the home. As perceptions change with leaders who were more tolerant towards women, their status became better and they were able to claim a better salary for their work. Till the early 20th century, it was considered unusual for married women to take up work, but as requirements increased and with the war creating a deficit of male labour, women began to work and by the 1950s and 1960s, it became common to find women working even after marriage. Introduction of new appliances made household work easier for the women, but they were not affordable until the late 1900s. 
Even dresses changed for women, and gradually short dresses and mini skirts became more fashionable than clothes that covered the entire body and made it difficult for them to work efficiently. Some of the most notable women of the period were Anne Frank, a young girl who died at the age of 15 at a Nazi camp, describes the horrors of Holocaust in her diary. Her diary made her popular as she related the fears and the way in which people were treated at the camps. Emily Davison, a strong activist who fought for women's suffrage in Britain. Davison was jailed nine times and she continued to rally her cause till her death, which was caused because of the injuries she succumbed to when she stepped in front of King George V's horse in an act of rebellion in 1913. Mother Teresa she founded the Missionaries of Charity in Kolkata, India. Mother Teresa was a compassionate woman who devoted her life to helping those who suffered from AIDS, TB and leprosy. She was honoured with Nobel Peace Prize in 1979 and her works continue through her missionaries till this day. Amelia Earhart an American aviatrix who was the first one to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Earhart disappeared mysteriously when she was flying over the Pacific Ocean. Rosa Parks Racial segregation was a huge concern in the early 1900s. Rosa Parks chose not to give her seat in a bus to one of the white passengers. This sparked a lot of action and it led to the Montgomery boycott which gradually led to the end of racial segregation in America. Princess Diana Lady Diana, Princess of Wales, the first wife of Prince Charles, was popular because of the number of charities that she supported. Her early death was largely scrutinised by the media. Aung San Suu Kyi She is considered to be a very influential woman in Burma. Her party had won the 1990 general election in Burma. She has also won a Nobel Peace Prize and the International Simon Bolivar Prize. For political reasons, Key has remained under house arrest between 1989 and 210. Florence Nightingale Often known as the Lady with the Lamp, Nightingale is considered to be the founder of modern-day nursing. She lived during the Victorian period and she helped making nursing a viable profession for women. Queen Elizabeth II Queen Elizabeth II came to power in 1952 and since then she has overseen many historic events. She is the head of Commonwealth and she is also the supreme governor of the Church of England. Indira Gandhi The only female prime minister in India, Indira Gandhi played an important role in forming Bangladesh and led India to victory against Pakistan. Oprah Winfrey the richest Afro-American woman who gained popularity through the Oprah Winfrey Show. She is known to actively support many charities. Marie Curie Her discovery of radium with her husband Pierre Curie and her works in different fields of science has helped the world in many ways. She was also the first woman to receive the Nobel Peace Prize twice. Coco Chanel an influential woman of the 20th century who changed fashion for the entire world and the way in which women perceive themselves. She is considered to have influenced numerous women across the globe. Malala Yousafzai After her recovery from being shot in the head, this Pakistani teen received the Nobel Peace Prize and she is today considered to be an example of female empowerment. History is evident that the role of women continued to change from dynasties to regions and civilizations. Till this day, women struggle for equality in many regions. Malala is one of the examples of being deprived of education as a female in a country that does not promote female empowerment. On the other hand, we have developed countries that relentlessly offer support to women so that they can rise up and work as equals in every aspect with the males of the society. As perceptions continue to change, women are being accepted as an equal gender and they are treated with more respect and honour. This has helped their cause and women have been able to excel in many fields today. From leaders to homemakers, all of them are able to find themselves in a position that was better than any of the women who lived in the past.
This is primarily because of the acceptance of the people that women are equal and should be treated unbiased. With continuous reforms and many rebellions, they enjoy a better status today. While they still run the household, they have a stronger persona than what women did ages ago.